All right. So, here we go. All right. All right. So, all right, guys. So let's focus in right here. So things you need to know about area very important. I need to make a connection between area and total distance traveled. Okay? We need to make a connection between area and total distance traveled and this should hopefully take only about five minutes. And then we'll move on to the problems that you're expected to be able to do. Alright, so first of all, let's talk about these areas. Okay. So we know there's a positive area here. We know there exists a negative area here and a positive area here. Okay. All right. When we think about area, that 0 to 4 area, let's say this is uh, V of X, velocity with respect to time, V of X dx. All right, what well, what are we going to think about when we add up all this area? Or what are we going to do to this next interval? So, of course I'm going to combine them, but what am I going to put next to this integral to make up for it being negative? What am I going to do? A negative sign. That's right. Multiply by negative 1. Or I don't even have to put the plus. I could just do minus. Right? Alright. And then this last uh, this last bit of area, integral from 8 to 10, I could just do that normally. And so this is going to equal total area under the curve. Now, this is not going to be applicable for your next test or quiz, but this will be applicable to your next AP questions that you have to do. What are we integrating, y'all? Well, function, uh, function. We're integrating a function. Well, what specifically, what type of function is it? I'm, oh, it could be a sign, but I'm named it V for a purpose. Yes. Velocity. All right. So, not only does this equal the total area under the curve, but let's break this out. This down. Integral. Let's let's break each integral down. So the integral from zero to four. What what can I what can I say this area is with respect to if I know if I'm integrating velocity what value is this area also going to be since I'm integrating velocity integral of the velocity function always equals what y'all position function okay plus C but the C doesn't matter because we're evaluating from 0 to 4 so this is a positive position which is uh, basically distance traveled okay distance traveled no that's <laughs> distance over time distance traveled that makes sense. okay so positive position distance traveled and so what will this be what will this area be equivalent to this is uh, position say moving right 
this would be negative negative position or I should say let's say distance I'm sorry positive distance negative distance and positive distance so we've got to see this as those distances alright so I'm going to try to break it down verbally for you off to the side so let's break each let's go even further let's say let's verbally state what is the integral from 0 to 4 of v of x dx? All that gives me the area under the curve. But this also gives me the distance traveled from 0 to 4. Distance traveled from 0 to 4. Okay? Actually, it would, I'm sorry, it would be uh, non-inclusive. And this would also be a distance traveled from 4 to 8 okay and this would be sorry distance traveled from 8 to 10 okay Now, what about this distance traveled? Who can tell me something about this distance traveled that's already indicated over here in the graph, this second one? It's yeah, it's a negative distance traveled. <laughs> Your answer will be a negative. But if we're going for total distance traveled, look, I've already fixed the problem. So when I have negative distance or negative area and I change it to positive with this negative sign, what does it do to the distance. It changes the distance to positive too. Okay? And you want to do this when you're finding total distance. So basically my whole point of all this is not only does this equal total area under the curve, but what does all this equal? I'm going to rewrite it again. What does is, what is this integral sentence actually equal as well? Well, it equals total area under the curve. Total area um, under the curve. It also equals total distance traveled. And here is the kicker here's like uh, the super brain question super super brain teaser alright what would the integral from 0 to 10 of v of x dx equal <coughs> what would that equal integral from 0 to 10 equal that's the that's the brain teaser right there. <clears throat> Here I'm moving right or up. Then I'm I change this to positive, right? And I change I leave that positive. But here I don't even I don't change anything to positive. So really this negative distance it's going to stay negative, isn't it? Here I change the negative distance to positive distance. Here I do the whole thing. So this negative area stays negative. What do I get when I don't change the negative distance to positive distance? You get some. Uh, um, hopefully... net distance travel because think about it what does this equal this equals the position at 10 minus the position at 0 
the end minus the start. That's it. It equals the end minus the start, the net distance traveled. Okay? And of course it was negative. If it was negative, you would make it positive. I mean distance we always consider positive. Alright? Go cool beans. Let's move on. So we discussed uh, any questions? Comments? Commentary? So we discussed this yesterday. Actually, you don't have to use three intervals. Uh, that was my fault. I'm so sorry. You can use three intervals, but it makes it probably more difficult. All right. Now, I've also checked multiple people's work coming in before school, and they're not getting the answer of 20.83333. I've been catching those problems, those mistakes on your papers, and asking you to rewrite uh, them, okay? So if y'all could help each other out and look through the algebraic um, mess, if you will, um, um, you can help catch each other's problems. The answer should be 20.8, 20 20.83 repeating. Is there any way to How to two, everybody's going to do it a little different. Exactly right at this second. No, I can't show you exactly how. Well, I don't. I would rather if somebody wants to come to you and have you look over their work. I would rather that happen. I would rather y'all look over each other's work and do the do the dirty work. <laughs> get dirty, look into it, and try and find where those things are. Okay. So yesterday in class. Yeah. Did we decide that you did have to use three intervals? No, you don't have to use three intervals. So if you did use three uh, A, B, and C, that's fine. If you did use A, B, and C, that's fine. I'm not going to... And you did get the correct answer, then great. That's awesome. You just split one integral into two integrals, and you really didn't have to. Okay. I just know it's Okay, that's fine. Y'all can collaborate on that. Talk to each other. All right, so what I'm going to focus on today is um, we can go two, two ways. We can do examples in class similar to the work from last night, or we can do what I'd really like to do. I'd like to preview tonight what I'm going to assign tonight for homework. So what, which, which one would you like to do? Examples like last night or preview tonight? Which one? You don't know? All right, let's talk about last night's homework, okay? A lot of people, well, I already did. A lot of people are making simple, minor, algebraic mistakes when you plug in your stuff, okay? So calculators only to check, though. All the work needs to be shown on your paper. Let's skip over to 10 and 12. We were supposed to also do last night. Now... 10 and 12, okay? This is actually a natural log tool. If you didn't use a natural log tool, show your work, you're going to um, get docked, okay? So be aware of that, all right? Number 12, this is a reverse power. I think we could spend about five minutes doing a c examples like this and it guys it would take like five minutes we could do a couple examples like this and knock it out what do y'all think works for works for y'all all right let's go let's go all right so um let's do the derivative to the integral Actually, let's do uh, let's do one to x. Uh, this is not a number, y'all. This is just a simple. Uh, let's do five m minus two thirds t dt. It's very similar to last night's problem. We're doing the derivative to the integral. So first, we need to do the integral. 
which I get a bar 1x oh I'm sorry I'm I am I am doing the problem for you I don't need to do that guys first you need to uh, write this nicely what I mean by write it nicely is I mean several things there's techniques all over the place this is a multiplying constant get rid of it minus two-thirds times one over T DT you see how I separated those two fractions okay alright let's go through this now we're ready to integrate because this is just written perfectly alright first before I do anything what type of tool am I going to use on this 1 over t natural log absolute value of t so I know what and this constant is going to stay the same bada bing bada boom write your write your integral you got 20 seconds All right, we got it. So our integral should be 5x minus 2 thirds natural log absolute value of t. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, it would be 5t. I made a mistake. All right, plus c. The plus c is necessary because we're just trying to show <laughs> as much work as possible in this, okay? Secondly, all right, now we plug in our x, plug in our 1, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to slowly work ahead with you. Now plug in the 1. Alright. <coughs> now, assuming this is non-calculator, and we will need to know these properties well this part's pretty easy uh... you can't do nothing but write it over again can't do nothing with that and i'm not ready to take the derivative yet i know these cancel no. all right i'm not ready to take the derivative yet i need to know what this is so what is this y'all this is five and what's natural log of one zero so minus five is all we have left over alright so now we take the derivative of that so go ahead and take the derivative Take the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Alright. <coughs> so I'm going to rewrite by saying, alright, 5 minus 2 over 3x. And watch, bam, equals f of x. Okay. That's all I need. Why am I done? Because what did I want? What did the problem say? I wanted the uh, number 10. I wanted it to, I wanted this to equal f of x, right? So this was f of t, and basically f of x is the same as f of t, but swapping the x, and that's what I got. Okay, I wanted to equal the same thing that I had here, except for with an x. Now, is that always going to be the case? When, when is it not the case? 
Does anybody remember? When the upper limit is... It's okay, when it's more than x. When the upper limit is more than x, say it's uh, 2x or a t squared or a x squared, when the upper limit is more than x, this does not equal straight up f of x, okay? All right, cool. Now, next problem, we're going to do an example. Some of y'all may just be working on the take-home quiz right now. That's fine. You don't have to follow me verbatim. I'm going to do another example. I'm going to do, that was an example of number 10. This is going to be an example similar to 12. All right. Now, oh my goodness, it's stuck in the denominator. It is stuck in the denominator. I might have to do a U sub. Why is, why is it not really stuck in the denominator? I can move it out of the denominator. So this is not a U sub. It's, it's, uh, it's playing. It's taunting us. It's acting like a U sub. All right. All right. So there we go. And I'm just going to work slowly as y'all work ahead of me. By the way, that's easy, right? I recognize that. I'm jumping for joy. That's a regular reverse power rule. That's easy. Okay. Reverse power rule is a times uh, x to the n. Uh, integral of that is a times 1 over n plus 1 x to the or sorry x to the n plus 1 we know that all right so 5 over 4 1 over negative 3 plus 1 I'm going crazy here. Hey, Coach, could you, um, right here. Before, it's not right, though. I'm right. Um, yes. Could you take the, like, I, when you're doing the reverse power, could you go on ahead and um, put it to the... Yes. You could skip this step. I'm just showing extra in case somebody might have forgot. And then go ahead and put it with the 5 over 4? Yeah. Okay. But... You got to include this, okay? Which is not really five over four becomes negative five over eight, okay? Good question. All right, I'm just moseying along here. This shouldn't take much longer, and I'm switching it to negative five over eight x squared plus c. Negative 5 over 8. 0 squared. Uh-oh. That's undefined. I probably should have picked a better lower limit. Hey, if you get something undefined, that's just totally my fault. Okay, you shouldn't get something undefined. Alright. My fault. Okay. So, I simplify this. Cancel, cancel. That's undefined. That's because Doofus teacher did not uh, pick a good lower limit. All right, so negative 5 over 8. X squared. Take the derivative of that. First, I move it up. Nobody wants to do a quotient rule here. Multiply negative 10 over 8 minus 
x to the negative 3 equals f of x. Simplify it, switch it. Whoa, I forgot. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. So it becomes positive 5 over 4. x to the net to the third power on the bottom equals f of x and that is exactly the same thing as what I had up here except for with an x okay any questions that took 10 minutes All right, if you have any questions for me personally, um, I'm not going to start on the uh, newer material until I feel like y'all are ready to go. Uh, can you go up a little bit? Yeah. Zero for which one? For six. Um, are you using more than one interval? No, I, I didn't know what interval you were supposed to. I, I drew the picture, but I only see the two intersections, negative two and three. Yeah, that's what you should do, is just definitely just use negative two and three. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, so, Stephanie has a question on number five, right? Five. Guys, you can use your calculator to check your answer, all right? I think I showed you this yesterday. I'm not sure if it was y'all or third period. Calculator, check your answer. So, all right, f of x, p of x, and g of x. I'm just going to plug them all in. And look, I already have them in my calculator. Woohoo. Awesome. So when you put these three things in your calculator, y equals 1, y equals x, and y equals x squared over 4. And let me go zoom standard. Uh, zoom 6. See, it not very, it's not very pretty right there. Okay? So I'm going to zoom in. Zoom 2. Enter. There you go. All right, so this is a spliced area. You've got to find area one and area two. All right, area one right there. Um, so what was the intersection point, Stephanie? Okay, right here. You got a positive and negative one? So you use positive one. And also... Um, all right, x equals zero. 
All right, so you subtracted X from both sides. Okay. All right. Here is a uh, here is a here's your one of your problems, Stephanie. Hey guys, take a look up here. When I set X squared over four equal to X for number four. So everybody check in your number four. Is this four or five? Number five, x squared, because you want to find the intersection point. Alright? x equals x squared over 4. This has an x squared in it, so obviously I'm thinking set it equal to 0. So, Stephanie did the right thing right here. 0 equals x squared over 4 minus x. Alright? Now, but when you multiply 4 to both sides, which is a great technique, I need parentheses on this side. 4 times negative x and x squared minus 4, so, and then 4 times the other side. So it ends up being x squared minus 4 on the right, so x equals positive and negative 2. Minus 4x. Minus 4x. Oh, so you factor out an x. I'm sorry. x minus 4, okay, equals 0, and then we get x equals 0. Well, it shouldn't be plus, is it x? It just be 4. x equals 4. Now, is that accurate based on the graph? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Based on the graph, let's look right here. Based on the graph, <coughs> All right, so right here, based on the graph, all we want is the intersection of this and this, which is 1, and then the intersection of y equals 1 and x squared minus 4. So really, I'm going to write on your paper a little bit. Really, we don't need this. Okay? What we need to do is set x squared over 4 equal to y equals 1 okay now we multiply 4 to both sides and take the square root what do we get 2 so this is 2 and obviously by the graph this is 2 so um, so what would a be here y'all 0 b would be 1 where the, where the split occurs is 1, and C would be 2. Okay? There we go. And I think, see, but I, I actually think that you, see, right here, work, you worked it out from negative 1 to 1, and that's not what I want. I want from 0 to 1. Okay? So that would cause an error. It would. It would be negative 2 and positive 2 when you did the square root. But, hold on. X, we're only using the positive. X squared over 4 equals, based on the graph, it should be fairly easy to surmise that, right? So based on the graph, I'm only getting this area, so I'm only using this positive 2 as my, sorry, I'm only getting this area. So X squared equals 4. X equals only the positive 2 when you square root both sides. Okay. All right. All right. This is great. Great. What do I set equal to each other? This is uh, y equals x, and this is y equals one. So y equals x and y equals one. How do I find out where things intersect? I set them equal. So x equals one. Okay. That just gives it to me right off the bat. That's where they intersect. Y equals X and Y equals 1 intersect at. I set them equal. X equals 1. Now the other one, the other one here, Y equals ze X equals 0. I get that by setting Y equals X. X equal to the quadratic. Y equals... <coughs> y equals x squared over 4 and that's the one we just worked out so let me go ahead and work it out again alright real quick so that's x equals x squared over 4 
and then that's 0 equals x squared over 4 minus x and then factor out an x and I'm not going to multiply both sides by 4 so x equals 0 that's the one we use and x x over 4 minus 1 equals 0 alright what am I going to get with x over 4 minus 1 equals 0 y'all come on a little mental math here x over 4 equals yep equals 1 so x equals 4 am I going to use that no I'm not going to use that I'm going to use that All right. So uh, I want to preview a little bit what I want you to do tonight, okay? And it has to do with the trig functions. And actually, I have some problems for you. I figured out what was wrong with numbers one and two on your take home quiz. Uh, back in the day, I used to teach double angle formulas, and I totally forgot about it. We don't use double angle formulas, we only use the, uh, the uh, Pythagorean identity. So I've got papers for y'all to get. Top minus bottom. Take a look. All right. So. Okay. So negative one. All we've got, Stephanie, is zero, one, and two. Integral from one to two. Y equals one. Y equals x squared over four. Possibly, if you did it just like that, I'm sure it is. All right. Who hasn't got this yet? I can't count. I'm to a point where I can't count. I'm to a point where I can't count. 
So, all right, let's do one. Um, All right, let's do one similar to uh, number 11 on your take home. So, everybody focus on number 11 on your take home. All right. Now, I'm going to do one similar to this, okay? Similar to 11. And y'all can, y'all, guys, y'all have done so many. I've, I've seen the stuff Miss Cogsberg gave y'all with trig identities. It's hor horrendous, it's hard. And y'all did that, so this should seem like child's play, except for it's partial U sub, okay? There is U sub in it. So this should seem like child's play, but, all right, my bad. I don't want cosecant. I want secant x tangent x from high to T <laughs> All right <laughs> Guys, I want y'all to focus in. This should be like simple child's play for y'all. I mean, simple Okay, first of all, this is a product something with an x times something with an x that's a no-no we don't integrate that until college uh, third year calculus in college or whatever okay we do not integrate something with an x times something with an x all right now if we do u sub what if i make u tangent what's the derivative of tangent secant squared, secant squared. do you see a secant squared you can't do this type of U sub then. You can't do this type of U sub. So we have to change it. And that's what I want you to be able to do. That's your standard, if you will, for today. Is to use a trig identity to create a integrable function. What's secant x, y'all? 1 over... Come on, guys. This should be ingrained in you. So it's tangent x. Wow. Sine x over cosine. Come on, guys. It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me. Right. So ddt, integral of pi to t. So what will this really be since I don't want it to be something times something else? Yes, sine x over parentheses cosine x squared. Don't give me that cosine squared x nonsense. All right. Hey, guys. Focus here. I'm showing you this example because it's child's play and we're reviewing U sub, so I expect you to be able to do it, so please focus. All right, now, I do not like cosine squared x. And if you write it as cosine squared x, chances are you'll get confused. And you'll make u equal to cosine squared. u is not equal to cosine squared. u is equal to cosine x. Because what you want u to be is the thing inside the parentheses. 
But you might say, Coach, sometimes we make you the whole denominator. Well, what about these parentheses? If it's inside the parentheses and it's more than X, I want it to be U. So what's the DU, y'all? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine X DX. Oh, I don't see a negative sine X. I see a positive sine X. So what do I need to do? Multiply by negative 1. Negative 1 DU is equal to sine X DX. And now here comes the hard part. Here's where everybody's brains go mush. Okay? Could it be sine X uh, natural log of cosine? No, because you end up with a reverse power. So just let the U sub take you. Let's take it a step further and you'll see it, okay? All right, so I want you to know you are getting rid of sine X. You're getting rid of dx. What's going to replace the sine x on top? I could do a negative 1, but that's a multiplying constant. I'm going to slide the negative 1 here. I'm going to I'm going to slide a positive 1 here. And what replaces the dx? What replaces the dx, y'all? <coughs> Do you? Why do I put the negative one away? Why do I put it on the side? Because it's a multiplying constant. Get rid of it. Okay? Negative one. Now the steps become easy if you realize I am replacing, I am replacing, I am replacing. So what do I write here? By the way, this could be a, a, a question on your next test next Friday. I'm thinking about, we're probably going to make it. That's our deadline, but that's what we'll probably make. You know, we're, we're on pace to hit that deadline. So what goes on top? One. What goes on bottom? U squared. And notice, if you wrote cosine squared x on the bottom, you'd have never guessed u was cosine. You'd been like, u is cosine squared. And it's not. So that's why I do not like writing this squared here. I like writing it like this so I can recognize my u sub. All right, du. Now, this is still not ready to integrate. I'm going to flip it. <coughs> u to the negative 2, du. Oh, it's a backwards power rule. So what do I get here? All right, I'm going to slow down a little bit. Y'all got to help me out. Negative 1 is definitely there. 1 over negative 1 is definitely there. U to the negative 1, all oh, y'all are rocking. Don't forget about your plus C. Now we need to simplify all this before we start plugging junk in. So what does it look when it's really pretty? One over u. One over u. Let's let's make it even prettier than that. What's u? One over cosine x plus c. Isn't that beautiful? So simple. So simple. It's like uh, it's like. Never mind. I was going to use that crazy analogy thing again. Never mind. All right. So, now, that's this is the easy, that was the hard part. Now, this is the easy part. I plug in T, 1 over cosine T. Okay. All right. Plus C. Now, I plug in pi minus 1 over cosine pi plus C. All right, now I'm going to start moving quicker because we've done the hard part, we've done the U sub, we've, we've done all, this is easy. We just got to figure out what's 1 over cosine pi. What's cosine pi? Negative 1. Come on. 
the C's cancel. We're minus a negative one. We're I said we're Kansas a negative one. And we got one over cosine t. Comes down. Okay. All right, now, blast from the past. I want to take the derivative of this. It's a quotient rule. Or, it's not. What could I make this cosine t, if I bring it up, what could I make it equal to? Cosine t to the negative 1. Not inverse cosine. Don't go all crazy on me. Now, that's a chain rule. All right, one second. Let's finish this example because I want you to be able to do your homework. Okay? Chain rule. Do it. Bam. What happens? Negative 1. Cosine t. Minus 1. What do I get? Negative 2. Plus 0. Rewrite. Oh, I'm sorry. Times. Times negative sign T and the negative signs cancel out and that goes on the bottom so it is equivalent to the beginning alright so homework tonight is to do let's work on numbers 11 um, 13 14 and 15 11 and 13 through 15 Hey, coach. Hey.